study on this wet and dreary evening. This thing here, I don't know whether it's the weather, what it is, but it's been raining since what, Friday? Mm -hmm. And uh, temperature's down a little bit. Uh, you might get tired of seeing me in the same shirt, but you know my favorite two shirts on dreary, cool evenings is the one I have on and the red one that I like to wear. Amen? So uh, you just have to bear with it. All right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this evening. Thank you for bringing everybody home safely. We pray for all those people out in Oklahoma and Dallas, Lord, without power and below zero weather and uh, snow and ice. Lord, uh, I pray you give the people enough common sense to stay in their driveways like the guy that pulled out his driveway and slid sideways all the way down the hill on ice. Couldn't do nothing about it. But, uh, Lord, I, I pray that you'd watch over us tonight. Uh, glad that Derek uh, got out of the hospital and that he's home uh, recuperating and his mom. And, Lord, we still pray for the family. Lord, his brother would have been 16 years old, I think it was, on Saturday had he had lived. Well, Father, we ask you to comfort the family and, and keep them. And, uh, Lord, be with us tonight as we study the Word of God. Lord, give us wisdom and understanding, for it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray and ask these things. Amen. All right, we got a little song here we want to play for you called Up Calvary's Mountain. Redeemer. All right. Let's see if we can get.
give it to you with the uh, oh let's see let me try this here some of you probably didn't know the lyrics Amen. Dying for me. All right. Girls, you ready? Yes, sir. All right. We have a prayer request here for Sister Ruthie. Pray our electric doesn't go out in the upcoming ice storm. Amen. Grab you a bunch of blankets and stay under them. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, we went away for that minute. <laughs> Uh, Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where the cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus is so sweetly <coughs> abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart the blood of God. Glory to his name. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in where Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast up your soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. We'll be picking up in chapter 7 of Ezekiel. Uh, we left off Thursday in chapter 6. And my apologies for Friday. But to be quite honest with you. By the time I got home and everything, I was just flat washed out, and I needed a break. Amen? And uh, without having to run from one thing to another, so you 
please forgive me. I'm sure you've been there. Amen. All right, I'm going to read you something uh, on the theme of chapter 7. Uh, well, it was actually 5, 6, and 7 from Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Uh, he has some interesting things here. It might help you too to understand what's going on in chapter 7. Chapter 7 contains the second of two messages of judgment against the entire land of Israel. Through chapter 5, Ezekiel's message had concerned Jerusalem, but now the whole land is in view. Remember, we had the northern tribes, uh, 10 northern tribes, which was called Israel. That's where Ahab and Jezebel reigned. And then you had uh, Judah and uh, Benjamin in the south. And so he was dealing in chapter 5 with Jerusalem. And now he's dealing with Israel as a whole. And he said Jerusalem had not yet been destroyed. And although most of the inhabitants had been removed from the land, many people still remained there. However, the events which had already taken place did not cause them to turn to God. You know, that's the way it's going to be in the tribulation period. It's going to be a terrible time, a terrible time. And the, and the people just will not repent. In Ezekiel chapter 7, in verse 1, Ezekiel is passing on to the people of Israel what God has to say. The first message given in chapter 6 open with the same words and that was moreover the word of the lord came unto me saying in verse 2 judgment was to come upon that land and of course it would include the people of the land the land of israel and the nation israel are always considered together in the word of god a new element is added to ezekiel's prophecy in this message this is now the prophecy of the final destruction of the land of jerusalem the final deportation will take place and the city will be destroyed. Now he's talking about uh, before they get carried away and the rest of them into Babylon. Uh, you know, when you're studying prophetic scripture and uh, you have to look at it in the way that what's currently happened or what's about to happen and then the future of what's going to happen in the last days and so you have to be careful when you're reading through these uh major prophets now he says in verse three this message is in the form of marvelous hebrew poetry and throughout this chapter i would like to quote to you the translation by the late dr a.c gablian lean the prophet Ezekiel, page 48. He has translated this quite literary, literally in poetic form. This then is the translation of verses 1 through 3. And the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Thou son of man, thus saith Jehovah unto the land of Israel, the end cometh the end. Upon the four corners of the land, now cometh the end upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways. And I will bring upon thee all thine abomination. God says to Israel, I'm going to judge you according to your ways. The judgment of the punishment will fit the crime. We need to ask ourselves, how serious is it to be a professed witness for God and yet really be a phony? How serious is it to be a church member and not be saved? That brings the issue right down to where the rubber meets the road for us in this day. I have said many times that I would rather be a hottentot in the darkest corner of Africa bowing down to an idol than to be a church member sitting in the pew professing to be a Christian, yet not knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I will not argue with you about what God will do with the hottentot. The Lord had his, has his plan for him. I will talk about the church members who are not truly saved. That is the issue in our day, which corresponds to what Ezekiel was talking about. Ezekiel says that such a man's responsibility is great because he has heard the word of God and he has turned his back upon it. The more he hears, the greater his responsibility grows. I can assure you of that. 
All right, let's start in verse one again, and we'll read down through here. I hope that gave you a little insight to where we're going and what it has to say. Hello, Derek. Tim says that Derek says hello. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chapter seven of Ezekiel, verse one. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And believe me, they were great. And mine eyes shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, and evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come. It watches for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations, that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. I'll read you here from verses 4 through 9 of what he has to say. And, uh, well, he says, there is a tremendous pass. This is a tremendous passage of scripture which I dare say few deal with today. It is totally unknown to multitudes of church members. Someone will argue, well, it belongs way back in the Old Testament and that makes it different. My friend, Ezekiel's language is tame compared to the book of Revelation and to the words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 25. Ezekiel's words here are those of a sissy compared to many passages in the New Testament. The God of the New Testament is the same person as the God of the Old Testament, and he will punish sin in any age. Amen. He said, I mentioned in the previous chapter a young Jewish rabbi who wants to dismiss God altogether because he cannot reconcile what happened to the six million Jews in Hitler's Germany. All I want to say is that ought to be a warning to the church of God today. Will God judge? Yes, he will. It is no wonder that Paul said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. That's speaking to us as Christians, amen, going to the judgment seat of Christ, amen. Many are playing church today, making it a cheap sort of thing. They speak of their allegiance, their dedication, but do not have a full commitment to Jesus Christ. That is the tragedy of this moment. Our problem is not that we do not have enough church members. The problem is we have too many who are not genuine Christians. There was a great preacher in New York City many years ago who made this statement. One cold church member hurts the cause of Christ more than 20 blatant blaspheming atheists. Ezekiel's message was not popular in his day, nor is it today. Amen. He's saying one person professing to be a church member that doesn't live up to it is worse than all them atheists. Amen? Amen. All right. Hey, pastor, it's me, Derek. I'm home. Thank God. Amen. That's a blessing. All right. Back to uh, verse 12 of Ezekiel chapter 7. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were 
yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence, and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. If you read in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, uh, in these last days during the tribulation period, he said, if they're in the field, don't turn back. Don't go back home to get anything. Go. Why? Because they're going to be devoured. Amen. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth. The horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them, and I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face shall I turn also from them. They shall pollute my secret place. For the robber shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way. And according to their deserts, will I judge them? And they shall know that I am the Lord. The Lord's going to judge. And he did judge Israel. And they went into captivity 70 years in Babylon. Then he brought them back. And they rebelled again. But one day, he's coming back for his people. He's going to deliver them. You know, they talk about. People will say, well, there's a God. Why did he let Hitler destroy six million Jews? When they took the precious son of God, God manifest in the flesh, the creator, plucked his beard from his face, beat him to a bloody pulp, and nailed him to a tree and said, let his blood be upon us and upon our children's children. And that's exactly what happened. It was judgment. God might not judge today, but he's going to judge. Are you ready? Are you prepared for the judgment? How will you fare as a 